stream. Hey guys, I thought it was about time to do another instalment in my Greatest Films of All Time series. You can see my previous videos, the first one for As Good As It Gets and the second one for In Bruges. This one, um, I took another trip back in time. I remember this very well from watching it back in my teenage years. Um, it's a romantic drama, a comedy, I guess. It's kind of hard to put it into words. Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of this film by now. Um, it has become a bit of a classic in its own right, and that's um, I'm overjoyed that it has become a classic, so I think it really deserves that status. It's a beautiful film by writer Charlie Kaufman, who before this point had been most well known for being John Malkovich and the brilliantly unorthodox spin-off adaptation, both of which he collaborated with Spike Jones on, um, and by director Michel Gondry, uh, who's most well known, I guess, for his music video work with... Uh, Daft Punk, The White Stripes and Bjork. This one I think is the ultimate combination of two really creative minds in film right now and it is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Why do I fall in love with every woman I see who shows me the least bit of attention? Joel Barish, played to perfection here by Jim Carrey, is an ordinary solitary guy who very impulsively and uncharacteristically skips out on work one day. He doesn't really know the reason, but he just feels a compulsion to do so and to get the train to Montauk. Here he meets Clementine Krasinski, played, again, perfectly, by Kate Winslet, and they instantly have a connection. The narrative quickly skips forward after a strange encounter that Joel has with a man named Patrick, played here, fantastically, by Elijah Wood, in which Joel discovers Clementine has had a medical procedure to erase him from her memory. This of course sends him down a downward spiral and he very much wants to do the same, and that's as much as I'm going to say about the plot for anyone who hasn't, may not have seen it. Um, I'm going to try and avoid as many spoilers as possible in this video, because I remember the first time watching this and to be honest, when I went in, the only thing I knew was that um, it was a Michel Gondry film uh, written by Charlie Kaufman and had a great cast. That's literally all I knew about the film and I was blown away from the first time I saw it. And I watched it again last night before filming this and I really had a sort of a massive emotional reaction to it. I think now I'm a little bit older as well um, and can almost relate even more to it. Uh, Michel Gondry is quite well known um, as being the king of the mise-en-scene, which is a French term um, for having everything practically in front of, in, in frame in the camera, so practical effects rather than CGI for example, everything um, to make an impressive effect is there in front of the camera being filmed on the day, and it really shows here um, just the, the inventiveness of some of the visuals is staggering even to this day and I've always really admired that in his music videos as well I think it was Bjork's um, I think it was either Hyper Ballad or Army of One that he did I didn't do my research on that <laughs> apologies but I, that that is um, there is a video that's kind of one whole take with Bjork in this uh, building going in and out of rooms that's just and it's a great example of that and Daft Punk's around the world um, he does have this real knack of doing everything either in one shot or just or even if it's not in one shot just doing multiple takes but having everything in front of the screen and it almost has the effect of that not a lot was done in post-production even though that's not true there are effects added in post-production as shown in Eternal Sunshine uh, filters and such but overall the effects of for example, in the dreamscapes that Joel and Clement Joel encounters, um, he wakes up in bed and there's uh, he's in a pile of sand because his memories are conflicting with each other and that's all done on screen, there's no CGI or anything and it's a really refreshing watch. Charlie Kaufman as well, who's behind the script here, is I think one of the most powerful modern writers. He, I've always been really impressed with him since watching Being John Malkovich and I was just really taken by the 
let's face it, just the weirdness of that film. It's such a weird, unique film, and I really liked that about it. And adaptation went even further into that rabbit hole. I think Eternal Sunshine is, in terms of both these filmmakers, I think it's, it's their most balanced film. They really equal each other out really well. I think a comparison with this can be made to some of their more solo projects, for example, uh, Charlie Kaufman in his directorial debut, Synecdoche, New York. I really, really like that film. I think it's really ambitious and has a lot of ideas and a lot of themes that are really interesting. Kaufman writing the script and also being behind the camera, it does make for this hugely dark and misanthropic sort of watch. The the balance in Eternal Sunshine with the fun and the playful definitely comes from Gondry. And similarly with Michel Gondry, he wrote and directed his solo project, The Science of Sleep. And I think that film also almost tips into the other way a little bit. It does, again, I really like Science of Sleep. I think it's a great film, but I think Eternal Sunshine takes, they're just two examples of these colliding, almost colliding personalities and combining them into a film that is fully rounded and well nuanced. Uh, the music by John Bryan is really whimsical and just the right amount of whimsy. It's not too cheesy, or quirky or anything. It's just the right amount. And when it gets dark, it gets dark when the narrative requires it to. And But there's some great moments, for example, when Clementine and Joel first meet on the train, there's this really um, almost upbeat and comic music playing in the background that I really liked. And then there's, of course, Beck's theme song, which is really brooding and I think does capture the melancholy aspect of the film really well. There's a really dreamy cinematography by Ellen Kuris, who went up to work with Gondry on Be Kind Rewind after this, and it really adds to the, the themes and the aesthetic the film was going for quite perfectly, I think. I found Joel Barish to be a really relatable character, and I think that's made even better by Jim Carrey. Um, who does just portray this very socially awkward and uncertain character and very private individual extremely well and it's one of my favourite characters I think that I've ever seen. I think it is just really well balanced, it's well written but also well nuanced with Carey's performance and Gondry's direction for the character. The confrontations and the behaviour between Clementine and Joel is incredibly relatable. I think when they end up having an argument in bed and an argument in, in the street even about certain things. It's just a, a very, it's a great example of two opposites colliding and they, as they say opposites attract. These kind of discussions are always inevitable in any relationship and I think it does portray that really well um, with Joel being quite a quiet and uh, almost secretive individual and Clementine being very outgoing and sensitive as well. They both are sensitive characters but very much display it in their own way. The narrative is richly complex but hugely rewarding and I think on the more you watch it the better it gets with each and every watch. Joel ex he expresses his hesitation to try new things which I did find quite relatable as a young adult as well. That It's perfectly encapsulated towards the beginning of the film when Joel is being encouraged by Clementine to come and try some ice skating just on this pool of ice. Um, and he's not sure, you know, what if it breaks? But she's just, you know, she's very daring and impulsive, as she commonly states uh, in, in the film. It encourages him to try something new and exciting, and he does, but he very tentatively steps on this pool of ice, almost like a penguin. <laughs> and I really noticed it watching it again this time round. It was something that I found quite an interesting touch and even more so because I do remember this interview that Jim Carrey did with Empire magazine back in 2011 when he was uh, just about to release Mr. Popper's Penguins. He talks about his stories with the penguins on set and how much he relates to those characters. And he, he even states a particular point where he says, we don't belong on water and we don't belong on land. We don't know what the heck we are. And I think it's a great quote because it, it shows that he's, I, I, I might be reading too much into this, but I do think that this particular shot in Eternal Sunshine, showing him waddling uh, a bit uncertain of himself on the ice, 
it just goes to show he has kind of thought about this before and a nice little addition to this performance that adds to the character's personality and his feelings. That's something I noticed just on the last time watching when I watched it again last night and there's also other things. Um, I remember the third time there's a scene where Joel's chasing after Clementine in one of his memories and you see she's got a leg missing. <laughs> and it's just things like that, like the first time you see it, it's really jarring and oh, that's, that's strange. Um, but it just adds to the, again, the dreamlike and almost nightmarish quality to some of the sequences. The whole cast are great, with Tom Wilkinson as Howard, who has his own subplot that's just as rich and well, well written as the main plot. The other characters such as Stan, played by Mark Ruffalo, and in particular Mary, played by Kirsten Dunst, brings just as much as the main plot, brings just as much humour as that does, but also has a very uh, serious undertone to it that is just really enthralling watch. There is some great humour in the film as well. Comic sequences such as when Joel reverts back to his four-year-old self in a memory with Clementine playing his mother's friend, which is really funny and a great sequence. And there's a few sequences like this with uh, Kerry clearly having a lot of fun playing an infant. There's also a couple of sequences that I just really wanted to mention because they're these very slight moments that I just found hilarious, on the, even on the first watching, and I think it's just, it's part of what I love this film, is its understated quality to it sometimes, and how funny some of these bits are, uh, particularly when Joel meets Mary for the first time in the clinic, he's going to get his medical procedure done. There's a certain interaction they have right here. Great. Have a nice day. See you then. I'm Joel Barish. Excuse me? I'm Joel Barish. I have an appointment with Dr. Enough. We are swag. And I think it's just hilarious. There's something about it that uh, just the way Joel replies again with almost this frustration that he's not being <laughs> he's not being understood very well. There's something about it that I just found really, really funny and, and kind of uh, slightly charming about it. I don't understand what I'm looking at. Why am I standing here and oh my god, deja vu. Deja vu. This is so. I think she can start it if you want to get the procedure on the way to life. You've got some work to do. I mean, my head already hurt it. Well, I suppose so. Uh, this, this is about right. This is, what it, this is what it would look like. There's also another sequence with Joel um, interacting with Howard in his mind. Okay, well, you're erasing her from me. You're erasing me from her. <laughs> This thing. I'm in my bed. I know it. My brain. I'm part of your imagination too, Joel. Uh, how can I help you from there? Uh, I'm inside your head too. I'm you. Sorry. Look, who's that? Oh, he, he, he works for us. That's uh, baby. It's so good. The memory hopping is beautifully done with almost the entirety of the last half of the film being uh, an adventure chase film with Carrie and Winslet trying to escape uh, the threat of being erased from each other's minds and it just shows the originality and the inventiveness and creativity that all the filmmakers put into the film and it just shows they genuinely cared about the project. I think it's the most effective representation of memory and dream logic I've seen on film while also not being pretentious, it knows exactly what it is while also playing with audience expectations on the first watch. It does have its twists and turns, but I think there is a real rewatchability, And there is a mixture of emotions after you watch it. I think depending on your outlook, you can either see it as a cynical look and downbeat look at romantic relationships, or you can see it as quite just very realistic and with this hint of optimism at the end between this moment between Carrie and Winslet that is just beautifully. Personally, I think it's a profoundly romantic film, although it can be seen as anti-romance. The resilience of these characters and their willingness to, to continue trying is really just beautifully done. Strangely enough, festival in 2015, I went to this festival with my very good friends. There was a midnight screening of Eternal Sunshine uh, that was in the forest. And if you've ever been to festival, you know it's a massive music festival that it used to be on the Isle of Wight anyway. 
and you can get to explore this woodlands, these massive great fields, it's a great experience. I remember just going to watch it in this woodland and the time flew by, it felt like 10 minutes watching the film and I watched the whole thing and I just, uh, I had an even deeper love for it than I had beforehand, uh, just getting to watch it in this really um, strange environment that you wouldn't usually watch something in and yeah, so it, it does hold a very special place in my heart, this film. I think that's why it is one of the greatest ever made. Um, but I do think, regardless of my personal opinion, I think there's a lot to admire here as well. And I do think a lot of people love it for potentially for the same reasons I do. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. If you want to comment down below um, about the film, that'd be great. I'd love to see all your opinions on it as well and get further discussion for the film. Thank you guys so much for watching, um, I had a lot of fun watching this film again and doing this video for it and I'm sure I'm going to be back with one again later on this year that I've already got planned. Stay safe, peace and love my friends.